the art of doing smears and trails on animation. So for today's video for the mini tutorial session here on Procreate 5, I actually want to show you guys how you can actually create a smear animation or trail animation on Procreate 5. Taking an animation of 12 frames, for example, so basically 12 layers in Procreate, uh, you could animate that same animation in two ways. One would be what we call the linear animation. And it's something that it looks like what you're seeing on the screen right now. Starts from frame zero and stops at frame 12 with you know a linear movement. The other way we can do the same animation with the same amount of frames uses a technique that we call anticipation. In that technique, we actually add a little bit of easing on both the departure and the arrival of the sphere, and that uh, looks like what you're seeing on screen right now. That adds a little bit of easing to both the beginning and at the end of the animation, and therefore it creates this really interesting effect, an effect where the animation is not at all linear, but rather has some really nice beginning and end. It adds this like smoothness to the animation. But for today's video, what I actually want to show you is using anticipation, but also the technique of trails or smears throughout the animation. So we're going to be building that in Procreate 5. So now let's just jump into Procreate so I can show you how we can plan this animation and draw frame by frame. All right, in order to be able to explain this step by step, I've created a few files here on Procreate so that I can take you all the way through the process of creating this animation. So in this very first file right here, the very first step that you need to create is to draw your floor line. So we're going to draw this little line here, and that's going to be our floor line and our point of reference for the element that's going to be traveling on that line. So our sphere comes next. So the next element that you need to draw is your sphere. Next, what we also need to draw on top of these two elements is our timeline. This is our timeline of frames and also a distance timeline. So you see that each frame here is depicted on a marker and that marker signifies where the sphere is going to be throughout the 12 frames or the duration of this animation. However, this is the linear way of actually planning an animation or planning out an animation. And we definitely don't want to use this way, but rather the way of having the anticipation. And in this way, as you can see right here, we have the first, the frame zero, first frame. And then right next to it, we have frame one, two has a little bit more of a gap, three, we start to really accelerate things. And then on frame four, we're way past the midpoint. And then five, six, seven, eight, that all starts to uh, really get closer and closer onto each other. And that means that the sphere is deaccelerating, it's stopping, but with a really nice ease that makes an animation really smooth. So now let's move on to the second file where I start to show you guys how this looks in animation. So at this point here in the file, we're actually not going to turn on animation assist. This is not where we start to animate, but rather where we start to plan out our animation. So the very first circle that you saw on the previous file, we're going to draw that one on frame zero, which is this very first frame right here. I'm just gonna isolate so you can see. Then next, we're going to make duplicates, just you can slide each layer, or you can do three finger swipe in order to duplicate these layers. And after you duplicate the layer, then you're gonna use the move tool and you're going to move the same element, making sure that the center of the element aligns to each one of these lines, each one of these keyframe lines. And that's going to give you an effect that will look like this or a planning uh, of the animation that will look like this. You will see every circle underneath every line of the keyframe and you will certainly see that at the very end of this animation right here, you will see a lot of the circles coming together, meaning that this animation will have a very nice ease in. So as it breaks, as it deaccelerates, you will see that these circles are actually getting together quite nicely once you turn this into an animation. If you were to play this file, I'll just show you, it's not gonna be really prepped for, uh, it's not gonna have the layers, you know, the background layer set as background, but if I were to play, you can kind of see what's starting to happen, but your timeline layer will flash and other things will happen. That is because we haven't set, we haven't properly set this file as an animation file just yet. 
we are still at the planning stage, just making sure that we have our keyframes right. So now let's hop onto the next file and that's where we start to actually animate things. And now in this file, we do have our line and our timeline set as a background layer. We see the sphere traveling or the circle traveling with all the anticipation and the really nice ease at the beginning and at the end of the animation, but especially of course at the end. So we've focused more to have a better uh, ease out here then uh, or is in some softwares actually they flip around so uh, I've noticed that between After Effects and other programs they actually flip uh, what's an ease, ease out and what's an ease in but anyways the breaking or the stopping point here has few more frames than the beginning of the animation so now let's hop on to the next file and this is where things start to get interesting Right here, I'm just going to show you a breakdown of the of the layers. By this point, I have every frame or keyframe, I have it as a group. And that is because Procreate understands that each layer, each single layer is a frame or each group of multiple layers is a frame. So in this case here, I have, I'll just show you, I'll just close every group here so I can show you this as best as possible. And I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so we have the layers panel because I do need to open the layers panel and show you the animation at the same time. <clears throat> so frame one, we have frame one, two and three just as normal. But when we start to gather some really um, some increased speed here on our animation, then opening here uh, keyframe four, we have these lines that I've drew and I've also put a little bit of motion blur to these lines. And also I've created two circles, this is the best way that I can show you, and then a connecting rectangle that makes the circle looks like a bit of a cylinder, like a, it, it's leaving the trail, it's creating the trail in the animation. So at this keyframe, the trail is not as big, but then moving on, I'm just gonna turn on my lines once again, onto the next keyframe, the trail expands. And the only rule of, um, rule of design here, or rule of animation, is that you probably don't want your trail to go all the way back to frame zero, you probably want to start stretching out, but do compare it to the previous frame. So for that, you can always use onion skin and you can just work bit by bit, just keyframe by keyframe and keep checking the trail animation they are creating. Just make sure that it's not as long as frame zero. So it's probably gonna give a bit of a strange visual if your trail right from the beginning is super, super long. So moving on to the next keyframe. So the lines are definitely longer. And this is something that I kept testing and playing and playing the animation over and over. And I, once again, the rectangle. And basically I just made a copy of this first circle to be the one at the back. So the both circles are the same size. That is of course, if you want your trail to be uniform, otherwise you may, um, you may want your trail to be kind of like a comet trail where it kind of uh, tapers out at the, at the end. Uh, you may actually want that, so it kind of looks more of a cone. Uh, then next keyframe, frame, uh, keyframe seven here, the trail started to actually shrink back because we're getting close to the breaking point or, or the easing in of this animation where it's going to stop. So uh, again, I started to also shrink the motion lines, frame eight, then keyframe nine, 10, 11, and by this point, we barely have a difference between the two circles. And then I believe that by frame 12, I have probably one of the last frames with two circles. 13 is the last one. And then 14, 15, there are only those very, very slow key frames where the difference is really, really small. Once again, I go into settings here and turn on, turn on onion skin. As you can see, by using just these slight, slight increments between keyframes at the very end, creates this really nice uh, stopping point for the circle. So it's all, of course, based on what kind of animation you want to give, what kind of a feeling and mood you want to convey with your animation. Here in this example, I just wanted to create something that definitely was dynamic, but it had a good kind of smoothness applied to the animation. So this is our test now without really like a lot of finishing touches on the background, but just showing you the trail motion, some of these secondary lines that I've added with motion blur as well, just to show another step in the process. And now finally, I believe this is the final result. So here on our background layer, I'm just gonna close 
all the keyframes that I have here. I was just doing a few more tweaks. So just closing everything. Um, on our background, I just have the ground floor is now just an artistic kind of texture. And I have a blue background just to give a little bit more um, contrast to the animation instead of just a white background. And I'll playing, you see something like this. I believe that this is now running at uh, 24 frames per second, but if I really wanted to add like more punch to it, even doing 48 frames per second, I can show you like how dynamic and how fast this animation can be. So you can do it this way. You may also want to remove some keyframes, but still keep your animation at 24 or even 12. And it's just going to feel a little bit more stepped throughout the keyframes. And this may be the artistic style that you actually want your animation. I, I also think it's really nice once we see things that actually look kind of like a stop motion effect. But here, once again, I just want to show you how we can create something really dynamic, fast, and that has a really good um, quality to the keyframes, both at the stopping point and at the beginning. So that's it for this video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did, a like would be super appreciated, as well as make sure to hit the subscribe button down below and the bell notification icon so you don't miss any tips and tricks, reviews, speed paint videos, and that is all for you to become a better digital illustrator. Now, if you want to learn a little bit more about Procreate and the amazing animation assist tool, make sure to click on the video that is on the right side of the screen right here. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Ciao.